Uh, so in this video we are going to see about how to implement ensemble models using rapid miner so for that we have taken an, uh, our easiest uh, data set which is nothing but the polynomial data set so this is our polynomial data set if you don't remember so you have the row number you have a label so it is a classification based data set so you have a label associated it's a supervised one and you do have one two three four five five different uh, attributes so these are the these are basically called as a predictors a1 to a5 are called as a predictors or independent variables and this is called as a dependent variable uh, or the target variable uh, so how can we use uh, ensemble learning in this okay this is what we are going to see so we have the uh, polynomial data set and then we are going to split the data set so uh, whenever it is a classification we know that it is uh, we should have a split and here uh, I am just taking the 70 30 split and then I am multiplying there is an operator called multiply so this multiply simply multiplies the data set okay so it uh, simply multiplies the data set so I am using that and uh, the multiplied data set is basically given to two different models one is a decision tree so in decision tree and you, I am using also the you know the random forest so I am using the default ones which is there the depth of the tree and the my method and everything is basically given there and then I am using the apply model in both of the models separately okay and also I am giving this uh, training set okay so uh, this is my testing set so I'm applying to the models as well then you know comparing the performances so as similar as that so when we run this particular model and you could see the root mean square and the squared error okay and uh, this is the performance vector for decision tree and this is the performance vector for uh, uh, squared error for uh, uh, a random forest so as you uh, as you know that if your squared error uh, so one thing which I wanted to recap here is that if the noise is small as estimated by the RMSE that is root mean square error then it means that our model is good at predicting the observed data and if RMSE is large this generally means that our model failing to account for important features underlying the data so uh, by going back to the results here so you have 88.1764 decision tree and you have like 53.61 so you could just uh, understand that which one performance performs better so random forest basically perform better because it does it does have a you know squared error lesser okay so when you look at it here the squared error is more okay so that is also another way of doing things okay so this is uh, one simple way of you know applying the uh, ensemble model so you can just multiply it and use it and so this is kind of you know the the uh, you know the detailed way of doing it Okay, so do we have an operator separately so that you know we could use that directly for you know ensemble method so that is what we are going to see further thank you so as i told you in the last uh, you know session you know there is something called vote operator which is available so here we are taking the sonar data so if you want to look at the sonar data uh, the sonar data is available here okay so this is the sonar data i'm just closing the other ones which so that you know it does not pause you with any of uh, confusions further so this is the sonar data if you could see that there is almost you know 60 regular attributes so they are the predictors and there is a class or a label which is associated with it which is the which is nothing but the class label so uh, these are the data which is there in the sonar so it will just uh, give you whether it is rock or mine or put you in both of those classes according to the values and the attributes values of the attributes so that's what it is so here also you are splitting the data as 70 30 <laughs> then you have something called vote operator here so when you look at the vote operator it it exactly comes under the modeling the predictive and symbols okay so this is the vote operator which is available in rapid minor so when you click on the vote operator you could see that you know you can have multiple models here Okay. so this is something like your cross validation which you used to so it's kind of a um, you know inner depth uh, an operator with inner depth okay so when you click on the vote operator you could see that you know we have used uh, so here uh, you have split the data and the training is basically so we are given the training here the training is basically given to basically given to decision tree random forest and knn so these are the three things and if you want to give specific uh, you know uh, you know uh, advanced parameter settings here you could do that and uh, they are all given to the outside 
So, uh, what happens is that each one of them is given to the apply model and then so it is a stacking technique basically it is a stacking technique where we use the majority vote voting and then it gives you the performance. Okay. So, when you run this particular model um, you will get uh, one accuracy you will get only one performance. So, it will it will take the best performance. Okay. So, this is the confusion matrix which you get where you know uh, one of the model is basically giving you 75.81 percent okay of it and you could see that how many of it it is correctly predicted as rock and if it is wrongly predicted and everything is actually given and you could get the class precision and the accuracy and everything and if you want to get the precision and the recall separately that is also AUC curve is basically shown here and uh, so th this is what the description is all about. So, if you look at it here, so you will get the three confusion matrices separately. So, where one is having the 75, one is having um, you know 71 person and uh, and here the recall is 90.91, but otherwise ok. So, this is what it is basically you know you will get by using the three different uh, you know uh, matrices, but the combined accuracy which you the best one which you could uh, get from all these three models the best one is 75 point. 8 one. So, it it will it will vote and it will get them it, it will do the job ok. You do not have to worry about it, it will do the job of you know uh, getting the highest accuracy from among the three different models. So, that is what this vote uh, will do ok. So, just for you to understand and I am just keeping a note here. So, it is very easy for you to understand here. So, it is a general voting technique. So, the operator uses the vote of each of the learner ok, each of the learner and uh, for classification for example. So, for classification for example, the prediction with the maximum vote is assigned to the unknown example. In other words, it uses the predictions of the three base learners. So, we had three base learners here K N and random forest and decision tree to make a combined prediction. So, it is kind of a simple voting technique which is basically used by this uh, method ok. So, this is what it is. So, hope you understood this uh, methods which we could do in uh, in ensemble methods. So, ensemble methods uh, generally help you to compare to have a comparison there are different type of methods available, but this is a simple voting technique which is available here or you can have separate methods you know run in parallel to see and which one is better. So, everything is possible by using, but it helps you to uh, form a combined method ok and uh, for a better comparison and evaluation technique. Thank you so much. So, hope you like this and uh, if you have any questions you can always get back to me. Thank you. Hi all, this is to show you about a small video on the uh, template ensemble solutions which is there already in the uh, uh, rapid minor. Many people you know does not notice this training resources because in training resources they have a lot of uh, uh, real type examples which they use uh, in order to know uh, and experience you know how would you could use all these operators in the real time mode ok. So, there are so many, uh, so this is in the training resources under the models in as this is a supervised model. So, we are using the super under the supervised you could see ensembles and this is this ensemble solution. So, here if you uh, see um, uh, yeah here if you look at the data ok. So, this is your ETL, ETL is basically uh, extract, transform and load ok. So, you are actually taking the data and then you are retrieving the data and then you are transforming them and then you are loading them for in the further processing of the. So, all this process are basically called as the data mining processes and data warehousing processes will come under ETL. So, when you look at the data, so here they have actually used this uh, customer churn data ok. So, oh, I am opening that. So, when you look at this sorry when you look at uh, this I will just open this data for you. So, when you look at the customer churn data ok. So, you have this row number, postal code, hash code, age, gender, payment, row number, last transaction churn data. So, this is about the data which you have in your hand ok. So, what uh, when is the last uh, transaction which has happened? So, this information is really important that uh, customer churn data is very important because you know you know how long the people have start stopped using such you know uh, maybe the uh, maybe the uh, website or the use of it of that of a particular website you know that is basically the churn the customer churn data. <coughs> and uh, here you are filtering the examples here you are filtering the examples from 15 to 99 years of age and uh, you have a function called uh, map. So, when you look at the data you know see here. So, you could see that it is mapping to certain values. So, it is just 
you know, say Weyblich is basically mapped to female and Manlich, you know, you, you might be, you know, wondering, you know, what this is, right. I will show you. So, when we go back to the results and see the um, gender, okay, the gender column, you could see that male, female, etc. And some uh, places you could see this Manlich and some places you could see this uh, uh, Weyblich. Weyblich, I, I, I don't know whether I am pronouncing it is correct. Weyblich. Okay. So, this is nothing but you know the mapping. So, we are mapping it to. So, this will be this manlich will be mapped to male and Weyblich will be mapped to female. So, that is what is happening here. So, that you know there is no inconsistencies in our data. And then the replace the missing values as you all know and data to numerical. So, you are converting the date to numerical value. So, when you look at this, you have something called, uh, you know, whenever you have this date, there are so many missing values, you are converting that and that is converted to numerical values and numerical to polynomial, then you are generating the attributes, you are setting the role. So, all these things are something which you have already known, right. So, this is what is happening in the ETL, <coughs> okay. Then you are multiplying this ETL to various operations. So, uh, when you when you look at the um, uh, ensemble, you can go for stacking, you, you can go for the voting technique, you can go for the boosting. So, this is nothing but boosting, okay. And when you look at this validation, there is a bagging technique which is there, there is a stacking. So, basically this example shows you all the different uh, four varieties of it. So, the first one is vote as we have already seen. So, in the vote again you have a training and the testing. And in the vote, you could see that you are using three different ones. So, according to the output and its majority will be taken, right? And that will be taken for the uh, performance uh, will be taken. And then the next one is boosting. So, when you see the boosting, you have this uh, uh, decision tree, okay? And uh, so, what you are doing is that you are actually doing a two level boosting. So, one is the decision tree and then the upper level, the top layer will be a basin boosting, then you are applying it. So, this is nothing but boosting. And then, so it is like, you know, once output is actually given to the, right. And then you have bagging. So, you have decision tree here and uh, then you are using the bagging technique and you are going ahead with that. And uh, then you have the stacking which you have already seen. So, in the stacking it is something related to your voting, but you know, you can also here also you can use, you know, two different levels. You know, one is the base learner and there will be a combiner which will combine all the stacking, okay. And then you can use a top layer model for bringing up the output. So, this is what it is. So, this is bagging as you could see in the bagging it is something kind of a parallel process. Uh, so, so you have this bagging and then boosting. So, the output of 1 will probably be given to the as the input to the next process which is Bayesian boosting. Okay, you could see that and then you have this uh, stacking. So, stacking where you have 3 different things and then you have a base learner and a combined learner. Uh, and it is co also called as a meta learner and uh, this is uh, merely the vote where uh, uh, you know the majority will be taken ok. So, the majority will be taken majority based voting is happening here right. So, this is what is basically happening here ok. So, 3 and uh, and the voting you know you can use the weighted average or average or you know whatever you want. So, uh, like that you can take or you could simply use the vote operator here and you can process. So. Uh, let me go back and run this. So, that is all it is. So, run this. So, uh, different models will be run. So, when you look at here, ok. So, this is your uh, base data, ok. This is the example set training data and uh, then you could see the vote model. So, when you look at the vote model, different trees are generated because we are using and this is the final you know stacking model which is generated ok. The KNN classifier. So, all the different uh, models could be seen here and uh, if you want to see the performance of the vote it is here. So, 77 percentage and then comes uh, you know the Bayesian boosting. So, uh, it is basically the bagging ok. So, you could see the different trees which are generated ok. So, you could see the different. So, in the depth, you know, we have actually given the number of the trees that has to be generated. And uh, if you want to see the performance vector of the bagging, you could see that almost 78.5. So, this is again bagging. So, you could see all this different type of uh, generations and 
this is stacking model these are the different trees because we used a uh, decision tree in many of the models so that's why we get so this is the base tree so you have the base classifier and the top most classifier so when you look at the performance of the boosting it is 79 percent performance of stacking it is 79.54 and then performance of the vote is 77 and performance of bagging is 78.3 so this is how you will get a complete idea about uh, how each and every technique basically work so this is a complete example okay which is upon which is taken upon a real-time data uh, for using the ensemble model so this is very important for you because uh, uh, ensemble methods if you're using supervised learning then you could go for the ensemble method for better compar comparison and evaluation okay so thank you so much so hopefully this video will uh, help you to uh, you know understand and explore a little bit more about the ensemble methods thank you so much